Hello everyone, it's me Arvind Patel and in this today's lecture we will discuss about the electrostatics ok and in this one the this one is our first lecture of this series so in this one we will discuss about the electric charges and field ok especially in this module we will discuss about the Coulomb's law and it is represented by me Arvind Patel ok so let's start here we have this statement for the Coulomb's law ok so Coulomb's law is uh, it will give the force between two point charges now what it will give ok so between two stationary point charges repel or attract each other ok so they will at repel or attract each other with a force and the force is directly proportional to the product of the charges so first thing you will note over here the force between two charges ok either they will be like charges or unlike charges it will depend on it so if they are like charges they will repel each other and if they are unlike charges they will attract each other ok so the force between them is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so let us suppose these two charges you have one is q1 another one is q2 and the distance between them let us suppose is small r now in this one uh, so we will go on a blank sheet and we will understand what is mean by this statement so here we have these two let us suppose you have these two charges q1 and q2 q1 one charge you have q1 another one is q2 and distance between them is small r so according to the coulomb's law in the force between them is directly proportional to the product of these two charges means product of these two charges q1 and q2 and inversely proportional to the distance the square of the distance between them so now on combining these two you will get f proportional q1 q2 upon r square on removing the proportionality sign you will get a constant over here this so here you will get a constant k q1 q2 upon r square and this constant k it is known as the dielectric constant dielectric constant so now we will see what is the use of this one so if you will see the value of this dielectric constant so it will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught here this epsilon naught is known as the permittivity permittivity of free space permittivity of free space so what is mean by this permittivity so if you will see two charges are placed at some separation then in our statement we have seen it will depend on the product of charges and uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and it will also depend on the nature of the material so uh, the nature of material means uh, the nature of the medium in which you will place them place them so this nature will also affect the force between them if the nature means uh, if the medium is present over there it is air then force will be different okay for the air if you will place the charges in water then the uh, force between them will be different okay suppose if you will put the charges in air in air and force is there force is there capital F in air suppose it is F air now if you put this one in water so this force in water remember this one the force in water will be there 1 upon k times of force in air so what is mean by this k so this k on the in other words if you will see so this k will be equals to f air upon f water 
ओके सो दिस के कैन बी डिफाइंड एज द रेशियो ऑफ द फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्जेस प्लेस्ड इन एयर टू द फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्ज बिटवीन द सेम चार्जेस प्लेस्ड इन वाटर हियर वी आर यूजिंग वाटर एंड इट मे बी एनी अदर मीडियम ऑल्सो ओके मीन्स इट विल डिपेंड ऑन द मीडियम इफ यू विल पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ द फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्जेस इन वाटर इन द डेनोमिनेटर सो यू विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ के मीन्स वैल्यू फॉर द वाटर ओके बट इफ यू विल पुट द चार्जेस इन एनी अदर मीडियम दैन यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द डायरेक्ट कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर दैट पर्टिक्युलर मीडियम ओके सो नाउ ऑलरेडी वी हैव द वैल्यू फॉर दिस के इज इक्वल्स टू वन अपॉन फोर पाई एप्सिलॉन नॉट एंड इट इज इक्वल्स टू नाइन इंटू टेन टू द पावर नाइन सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एप्सिलॉन नॉट सो दिस एप्सिलॉन नॉट विल बी इक्वल्स टू फोर पाई इंटू नाइन इंटू टेन टू द पावर नाइन एंड इफ यू विल पुट दिस वैल्यूज सो यू विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ एप्सिलॉन नॉट इज इक्वल्स टू एट पॉइंट एट फाइव इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस ट्वेल्व डायमेंशनल फॉर्मूला फॉर एप्सिलॉन नॉट इट विल बी एम इनवर्स एल क्यूब इनवर्स टी टू द पावर फोर ए स्क्वायर नोट इट डाउन ओके एंड नाउ विल सी द एक्चुअल फॉर्मूला सो एक्चुअल फॉर्मूला फॉर दिस कुलम्स लो नाउ वी कैन स्टेट दिस वन लाइक दिस एफ ई इज इक्वल्स टू के ई क्यू वन क्यू टू अपॉन आर स्क्वायर आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस टर्म्स एंड हियर यू हियर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस टर्म्स एफ इज फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्जेस k already we have seen the coulomb's constant or it is also known as the dielectric constant value you can see 9 into 10 to the power 9 approximately it can be written 9 into 10 to the power 9 q1 q2 are the charge between which we have to find out the force and r is the distance between them now next uh, slide if you will see so now we will see the comparison between coulomb's law and the newton's law of gravitation so here you can see this one is our coulomb's law statement means formula for the coulomb's law f is equals to k q1 q2 upon d square and on other side you will see the uh, formula for the newton's law of gravitation now what are the similarities between them so you can see in both these two are inversely proportional to the distance the square of the distance okay so uh, you can uh, write the similarity between them both will obey New, uh, means uh, newton's gravitation law and uh, newton's coulomb's law both will obey the inverse square law both will obey the inverse square law okay now next thing if you will see the difference so here you can see difference uh, as it is clear gravitation law is based on the masses and uh, coulomb's law based on the charges now the second thing the main important difference uh, between the coulomb's law and the uh, gravitation law is that the gravitational law is always be attractive in nature okay it will not means the two masses will not repel each other but in case of coulomb's law it will depend on the nature of the charges if the charges are like charges then they will repel and if the charges are unlike charges then they will attract okay so it may be repulsive or attractive in nature this is the main difference between them and uh, here if you see the value of this uh, capital g so is uh, value of this one 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 and this one is very small as compared to the value of this k okay and value of this k we have 9 into 10 to the power 9 so this capital g is very small that is why whenever you will find out the force uh, gravitational force between two masses then it will be very small as compared to the coulomb's force okay now next uh, if we'll see so here so there uh, some important points we have okay about the coulomb's law so first thing you will note it down uh, it it is 
based on experimental result means uh, theoretically we cannot prove it okay uh, it is based on an experiment performed on it on the charges okay now next thing uh, holds only for the point charges small point charges uh, for small distances it will hold okay now next uh, application for the charges at rest not for charges in motion why because if the charge is there in rest position then it will produce the electric field only but if the charge is moving then it will produce the, the magnetic field as well as the electric field okay so that is why it will applicable uh, for the charges at rest only okay why because uh, if it will move then uh, it will produce the magnetic field also okay next thing both charges ex exert equal and uh, opposite force on each other so if two charges are placed then one will apply force on another one okay and the second one will apply the force on the first one and the force will be equal but in opposite direction okay and uh, force between two charges is central force now what is mean by the central force so listen if you have these two charges q1 q2 then either they will attract or repel no matter but the force always will act uh, along the di di along the line joining the centers of these two charges so these type of charges which will act uh, along the line joining it is known as the central force so remember this one coulomb's uh, law means uh, this uh, force is also a central force next uh, force between two charges does not change uh, by the presence of other charge suppose if you have this charge q1 and q2 and between the, uh, in between there is force f and if you will put another charge q3 over here so there will be no effect on this force so this force remains constant means uh, the presence of third charge will not affect the force between them now next thing the force between two charges depends upon the magnitude of the charge distance between them and the nature so already we have seen this one okay now next thing if we'll discuss coulomb's law in vector form so as you know about it force is a vector quantity so whenever we will uh, required the vector form of this coulomb's law so we can write uh, for, uh, force is equals to similarly 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught but here we will include a 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 upon r square with this value we will include the unit vector also okay so always remember the unit vector will give you the direction okay so this unit vector we are using over here for the direction of force so you can see over here and uh, here you can see these two forces force f21 is equals to f12 but the directions if you will see then we will put this negative sign to represent the direction and from this one you can see these two forces are equal but here we are putting this negative sign so you can see the uh, forces are equal but opposite in direction okay that's it so now if we'll see next uh, so here you have the principle of superposition okay so principle of superposition now what is mean by this principle of superposition so listen already we have seen if there is two charges q1 q2 and if you will put the another charge q3 so there will be no effect on this uh, force on between these two charges okay why because the presence of third charge will not affect the force between any two charge so if you have here uh, let's go let me go on this blank sheet so we can understand what is mean by the superposition principle so listen here we have this q1 charge another charge we have q2 charge third one we have q3 charge and fourth is q4 okay let's show on there is charges q and also okay now suppose this q2 is applying force on this q1 q3 is also applying q4 is also okay so like this they are applying force on each other okay they are applying force every every charge will apply force on this q1 and this q1 will apply force on another charges also okay so now what will be the value for the force total force which is known as the net force so net force what will be the value for this one okay so if you'll see net force so it will be equals to 
फोर्स एक्सर्टेड ऑन फर्स्ट बाय सेकेंड प्लस फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय थर्ड ऑन फर्स्ट प्लस फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय फोर्थ ऑन फर्स्ट एंड सो ऑन सो इफ देयर इज एन चार्जेस सो फॉर ऑल द फोर्सेस यू विल कैलकुलेट एंड यू विल एड बट ऑलवेज यू विल एड बाय द वेक्टर सम सो ऑलवेज यू विल टेक दिस फोर्सेस एंड द डायरेक्शन ऑल्सो इंक्लूड ओवर देयर सो दैट इज वाई इट इज नॉन एज द वैक्टर सम ओके सो दिस वन इज आर लास्ट स्लाइड नाउ थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग ओके एंड इन आर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल कंप्लीट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ओके थैंक यू